Good evening and welcome to the school board meeting um, October 8th, 2002. And we would like to start with the Pledge of Allegiance. We do have um, a couple of adjustments to our agenda tonight, and um, we will move all of the trip requests from unfinished business and new business um, up to no, after number seven, after recognition. Um, and that is our only adjustment, correct? Yes, and there is the... Oh, and there's an addition... There's an addition of a, a trip request um, that will also take place at that time. Okay. It uh, was handed out prior to the meeting. Okay, so all of those trip requests will go after uh, recognition. Um, then we'll move on to the approval of the school board minutes from our last meeting on September 10th. Does anyone have any corrections or anything? No. And what about our September 24th meeting? Any corrections, comments? Nothing. Okay, so then um, we will uh, move to comments by the high school and the middle school students. So, Hillary and Aaron from the high school. Hello. Um, first of all, we'd like to talk a little bit about homecoming, which has been kind of the main thing that's been going on recently. This year, we started something new. Instead of having the skits as we have in the past, we had kind of a class competition that lasted a couple days during the week. Um, it was fairly successful and a lot of people participated. The class competitions included tug of war, egg toss, there were pie eating contests, um, trivial pursuit, chess, I think bocce ball. I'm not sure how many people did that. but. <laughs> and then uh, on different days, we uh, had music playing in between the classes. And classes each, like one day each class dressed up with a certain color. And then it became a competition, so each class gained points each day. And um, I think the junior class ended up winning, but I'm not sure about that. Seniors won. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and I thought there was pretty good participation with the students, and I think it worked out really well for the first year to have something new for homecoming. And we had a bonfire, and I think there was pretty good attendance at that, too, for a first-year thing. Um, then we had, during homecoming, we had the games and those went well. And then we had the dance and I heard that there were a few problems with the dance, but the student body, I think, really liked it and would definitely like to have more in the future. And so overall homecoming, I think this year went really well for having new things. Yeah. Um, yeah, homecoming was really good. It was last weekend. Um, some of the problems with the dance were mainly just because some kids came drunk and they just got trouble just because you know, they didn't know what they were doing, but that's the reason. And um, I don't think we should all suffer from, you know, some kids misbehaving, you know, just like, that's my personal opinion. And, uh, yeah, we needed more chaperones at the dance, too. Apparently there weren't enough, so maybe next time we can. Some some people had some ideas of having the coaches come and chaperone, so they'd be like, yeah, my players won't cause trouble. If your coach is there, obviously you won't. So um, that's a good idea. I mean whatever needs to be done. So, Anyway, uh, the Student Activity Council is getting started again. Um, we're having a meeting tomorrow and we're going to discuss setting up committees for the school and all that stuff and planning graduation. And, um, also, um, discussion about future dances, how we can improve the atmosphere so that we can have more and be successful in keeping it clean and so everyone can enjoy it. Exactly. Yeah. That's going to be probably the main thing. And, um, okay, sports at the high school are going really well. Uh, all the sports teams are doing really well. You know, Escape Elizabeth always does well, but everyone's having a good time. There's really no problems with sports. Um, also, one other thing that was different this year was uh, that we, everybody received progress reports for 
every class that had um, at least the core subjects. And so you'd know what you were doing halfway through the quarter, a little bit more than halfway through the quarter, which was really good, I think, because it tells you what needs to be done to improve your grade and gives you an idea. So when your grades don't come, you're just like, what happened? You know, this grade's awful. How did this happen? So they're giving you an idea, and I think that's really good to send them to all students and not just the kids who have, like, C's or D's. So that's really good. Um, also, we had a debate last week with um, Tom Allen and Stephen Joyce. It was kind of a televised debate. It was live, like, broadcast over a video. And I think that was really good. I think a really good experience for students to interact with uh, the political community and get an understanding of how politics work and have some viewing time. It was really good. So. No, that was neat. Okay. Any questions? No questions. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. And now the middle school. If you both would please introduce yourselves sure. first. Hi, my name is Elise Mooney Roberts. And I'm Elise Maloney, and we're both eighth graders, and we're the Cape Elizabeth Middle School Board representatives. This year, we have a great student council. Our advisors are Mr. Paul Casey and Mr. Dome. Our president is Alex Koch. Our co-vice president for seventh grade is Carly Riker. Our co-vice president for sixth grade is Nora Daly. Our treasurer is Nick Daly. Our secretary is Stephanie Burkhart. And our historian is Erica Chinquette. Um, our eighth grade representatives are Sylvia Jakubski and Heather Furman. Our seventh grade representatives are Christina Ross and Kevin Johnson. Our sixth grade representatives are ne Evan Nagel and Sierra Rintel. And our fifth grade representatives will be having an election a little bit later on in the year. All grades from fifth to eighth participate in the Sally Foster gift wrap fundraiser. We are expecting the orders to come on come in this Friday. Oh no, next on Friday, November 15th. This is our main fundraiser for the school, so we hope we made a good profit this year. On September 11th, the entire school came together outside in a remembrance of the terrorist attacks. We recited the Pledge of Allegiance and saluted the flag. The chorus led everyone in the song America, and then we had a moment of silence. This was appreciated by most everyone. It was a very nice ceremony. Also, progress reports are coming up this next Tuesday. Um, in the fifth grade, they recently um, went to Kettle Cove for their first middle school outdoor experience trip. Um, while they were there, they inspected and studied the marine life in the tide pools. And they just re recently received their um, instruments for band, and so they're very excited about that. The sixth grade has had a very smooth start. Not much is new except for they had their own sixth grade um, September 11th ceremony. And they made freedom posters. These describe what each student believed what freedom meant. And they were hung in the halls. And I know that a lot of people looked at them as they passed. Um, in seventh grade, you may know that they're at Kiev right now for a week. Um, they're going earlier this year. Um, in the past year, we've gone the week after Thanksgiving break. And also, as you probably know, all the seventh graders received laptops this year. Um, we didn't really get a chance to talk to them too much about how they like it so far, the students and the teachers, um, because they left to Kiev. Um, and we'll try to update you on that a little bit later. But from what we've heard so far, it seems to be that it's a positive addition to the seventh grade curriculum. The eighth grade has had a pretty smooth, pretty good start and has just finished participating in a coastal cleanup, which is a national organization. Each advisory group cleaned a local beach for about two hours. This turned out to be very successful, and many thought it was a nice way to give back to the community. Um, in addition, Mr. Strout's advisory will be helping out at the soup kitchen, and Mr. Turner's will be recycling bottles. Coming up soon, at least as soon as more leaves begin to fall, we will take part in leave breaking for the elderly. This is run by the police department. This year we are focusing on giving back to the community after all you've done for us. 
Um, the first dance of five of them that the Student Council is putting on for seven, is for seventh and eighth graders is on September uh, 27th from 7 to p.m. 7 10 to 10 p.m. in the middle school gym. Did not go as well as we'd hoped, but soon after it, we met with the, met, the Student Council met with Mr. Casey and we discussed how we can make them easier to manage next time. Um, one suggestion from last year was to have better decorations, and the Student Council worked pretty hard on that. And um, afterwards, some students and teachers let us know how good they looked. So, and also from the $3 admission at the door and the snack bar run by the sixth grade student council members, um, we had a final profit of around $700. For sports, this has been a great season. Um, all, well, most sports are doing very well. The cross country team in the seventh and eighth grade football team is undefeated so far. And all teams are practicing very hard and enjoying it. And um, there's been many comments about great coaching. Um, the fifth and sixth grade socials, the first one is on November 1st. And um, from what we've experienced and what some students have told us is that sometimes the socials are sort of get boring after a while. So at our first meeting, we brainstormed a couple ways to make them more fun for everyone. And we thought of maybe bowling or mini golf or um, tubing or ice skating. Um, so we'll be working on that in the future. And another thing is um, the playground. Um, it seems to be a very positive addition to the school, and it seems to be very popular after school, like during sports games and stuff like that. And um, after the student council worked so worked hard to help raise some of the money, they felt that all the students should be able to enjoy the playground during the day. And the fifth and sixth graders do get recess, but the seventh and eighth graders didn't really get that much time after, besides after school to go on it. So they um, figured out a way for the seventh graders to get out on Monday during advisor and the eighth graders to get out on Friday during advisor. And the fourth square court seemed to be a big hit. So the students um, at the middle school would like to thank the playground committee and town for raising the money to build a new playground. Okay, well I think that's about it. And school's off to a good start. Any questions? Well, I, I think the two of you did a fabulous job tonight, and you certainly gave us a, a ton of information of what's going on in the school. Thank Great you. job. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so we can move on to communications. Um, in your uh, packet, uh, I've highlighted a couple of items. One uh, is the MSBA proposed resolution packet. Um, just to bring it to your attention that if, if there are... It isn't something that we need to take any action on, but one of, one of our members is the delegate to the, um, to the assembly, and I don't know who that is. Is that you, Susan? Susan? I no? Susan? I think it's Susan. <laughs> I knew that. So if anyone has any input regard to any of these resolutions, give your input to Susan so she knows how to vote. I know it's not me. And then a letter is included also, as you know, Tom Eismeyer um, is on the Fulbright program in Japan right now. I just included that letter uh, in your packet. Okay. Um, and then, um, do we have any comments from the public tonight? Nothing. So we will move on to um, recognition. <coughs> and um, Kelly Hassan was um, our finalist this year for the Maine Teacher Award. We've been uh, very fortunate over the last, I think two out of the last three years, we've had Joe Doan, I think two years ago, um, was a finalist. I don't think moved quite as far in the program as Kelly did, but uh, we have had teachers in the past that have been recognized in the main Teacher of the Year program. And this year, we have one of our elementary school teachers, Kelly Hassan, uh, who went quite a ways in this process. And I think it's important to note, too, that um, this is a big job. Uh, being nominated for Teacher of the Year um, comes with a lot of work. And um, I hope it was something that was worthwhile for Kelly, um, but there are essays that you need to write, there are interviews, there was a visiting team that came to the school. So there is an awful lot of preparation. Um, but I think on a positive side, um, it's really nice to know that, that one of ours um, has been recognized. So aside from all the other recognition I know that Kelly has received, um, the school board wanted to add to that just a, a certificate 
uh, of their recognition and appreciation for, for what you've accomplished. So we're here to present this certificate that reads, the Cape Elizabeth School Board presents this award for outstanding accomplishment to Kelly Hassan in recognition of your selection as a finalist for the Maine Teacher of the Year. Through this accomplishment, you serve as a positive role model, not only for your students, but for the entire Cape Elizabeth School community, in appreciation for the Cape Elizabeth School Board. Thank you very much. This, this means a great deal to me, and I was honored at the school in a surprise ceremony um, two weeks, last week. Um, very big surprise ceremony. Um, the whole school went, and I was totally unaware, and was sort of tricked to go there, and thought I was on my way to get some special food, and I saw the crowd in there, and I said, no, we have to go in the next door, because something's going on there, and little did I know. N never thinking to question why would I not be invited to something going on in my school, anyway. Um, but thank you, it's, it's been a really exciting process, and as Tom said, it, 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 it was a lot of work, but it was, it was very energizing at the same time. It really allowed me to reflect on my practices and to really think about what I do and why, and also to network throughout the state and meet some other just tremendous educators throughout the state. Um, but I have to say, uh, the teacher I am and the teacher that I continue to, to work toward uh, you know, aspiring to be really is, stems from the incredible collaboration I have at my school, um, the whole system, truly, um, but with my, the most amazing colleagues and administrators I think anyone could ever work with, and a c incredible support, support of parents and the students. You know, I'm b rather biased, but and I've had several on <laughs> this school board, um, <laughs> children, um, who are, are just fabulous. So I, I really um, just couldn't ask for a better place to work. And the opportunities I've been given here in Cape Elizabeth from paid sabbatical leave to go earn my master's a few years back to continual professional development has just been phenomenal. So I, I truly thank you. And um, while I earned this award here, um, as a state finalist for Teacher of the Year, I, I think that award really could go to just about anybody in our school. So I, but I, but I thank you very much for the recognition. Um, and now we will move down to um, consideration of requests from the Foreign Language Department regarding. Um, um, foreign travel um, during the school year. And the first one is a um, request from David Perry. Um, if you remember, this, this was a request that would, came to you last month. Um, this is the second time, so this will be something you'll need to take, take action on. And I think David is here if you have any questions. Just an update, I told you um, last time that I had been in contact with the other schools waiting for approval from the uh, principal of the other school who I had buttonholed this summer when I was in France. And um, he has given his permission for their trip to particip participate. And I am now waiting for my counterpart to commit himself to participating in the trip and obviously waiting for your nod of approval. Once I have that, then I'll email him and say, it's time to fish or cut bait. <laughs> I wasn't here last month. Is this the same school? Same school, yes, in, um, on the Atlantic coast at the mouth of the Loire River at the uh, city of San Nazaire, roughly the same size as Portland. But it's the same one you were at? And it would used to be the same high school that we were at last time. Mm -hmm. Do you currently have 12 students that are interested in doing this? I have not actively recruited students. I've informed the students who might be candidates, but I didn't want to work real hard getting a group and then say, oh, sorry, mm -hmm. um, the school board doesn't feel this is something we should participate or um, the, the hosting school is not ready to, to be a part of it. I, I, if you gave your approval tonight, I would probably have a parent-student meeting in the next week or so and say, we have approval. 
these are the preliminaries, um, think about it, and then when I get the final word from um, the hosting school, then say, okay, who wants to go? Okay. I know you have one who's... Oh, okay. Well... She's already brought it up. Oh, all right. <laughs> I wonder who. <laughs> Any other George? Um, hi, David. Um, has the time increased? Is it a longer trip? It's always been a two to three week trip. Okay. Yeah. But this, this is projected as a three week trip now, right? Is that correct? In the neighborhood of three weeks, yeah. Is that what we were talking about before? I just Yes, yes it was. But one of those three weeks is vacation. No, I understand right. that. I, yeah. I, um, for somehow I didn't think it was three weeks. I thought it was short. I thought it was two weeks. Any other questions? No. Um, do, do we have a motion? You need a motion to yes. take action. I've just got another question. Was the Spanish trip to Costa Rica last year, was that three? It was under three. I think it was two and a half. Two and a half, I think. Okay. But that was an exchange also. Yes, that was an exchange. Oh, well, it was supposed to have been an exchange. It was a one-way exchange, and the second part of that is going to happen this year. Right. Okay. They're coming back this year. Um, uh, Kevin, sorry. I move that we approve the trip as presented. Okay. A second. Susan? Um, any other questions or comments? Okay, then all in favor? Seven, zero. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. I will send word to you as to whether we actually are going or not, or you may hear via the grapevine um, whether we're going or not once it's finally nailed down. Thank you very much. Okay, and next we have um, consideration of a request from Nancy Murphy, um, high school English teacher, regarding a spring trip with students to Italy and Greece. Um, again, <clears throat> this is the second time this is, has come before you. This is a bit different. This is um, um, more of a tour rather than an exchange. And the, it takes place during a school vacation except for maybe one to two days, one day. So the actual um, request that comes before the board is the approval of the missing of school day. Um, are there, who is answering questions? Jeff, I think Jeff, Jeff is, will answer any questions you might okay. have. Does anyone have any questions about this trip for Jeff? Jennifer? Oh, no. This is the third year Nancy's done it, right? Yeah, this has been something. I think this is the third year that they've taken this trip. Yeah. How many chaperones go on this trip? And anyone? I'm pretty sure. Okay. And anyone can sign up for this. There are no requirements right. for a high school student. Is it all grade levels, uh, from nine through twelve? Okay. Okay. Um, are there any other questions? No. Then we need a motion. Kevin? Why not? <laughs> I move that we approve Nancy Murphy's uh, planned trip to uh, Italy and Greece as presented. Okay, thank you. Second? Elaine? Um, any other questions or comments? No? Yeah. Uh, Jennifer? Second. Um, I've, it's in here, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, yes. I've seen it yes. elsewhere. Mm -hmm. um, I just think that we may need to word that with Turkey as well. Isn't Turkey? No. Um, is it just Greece? Greece and Italy? It, extension. I think it was just Italy and Greece. That's what we have yeah, in our packet. Okay. Extension includes Turkey. Isn't there an extension to Turkey? No, the extension yeah. was uh, just to the Greece. islands in okay. just the Greece. Greece, right? Okay. Right? right. Maybe my kids were hoping it would be somewhere. To <laughs> I just wanted to, our motion to reflect it if it was okay. also included. Um, then we can take a vote. All in favor? 7-0. Okay. Thank you. 
Um, and now we will move on to um, Ted Jordan. What you were given oh. tonight was the request for um, Ted Jordan, as you know, has um, for the last at least couple of years taken a trip to the um, to New York, uh, to New York City, to the stock exchange. Um, so this is that that trip coming before you again. I think it is planned for November, November 11th. I think one year they did come back to the school board. Last year. Oh, yeah. Last year, okay. Yeah. Yeah. It was quite, they did, it was quite he did informative. both years, I think. Yeah. yeah. That would be good, I think. I think yeah. they should all come back. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Yeah. Um, because we got a trip, I mean, we got a report from one of the foreign exchange programs also, didn't from we? David we came back for also, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I think we like hearing about yeah, these trips. It, it's great. Um, okay, so for um, the proposed field trip to New York, do we vote on that? I think you'd have to vote on that just because it's, it is in November um, and they need to make plans. Okay, so do we comment, question? Motion. Motion. Okay. If you're ready. Uh, yes. Um, I would move that we approve the, um, I believe it's the high school economics trip to um, Wall Street uh, that Ted Jordan organizes. Okay. Um, second. Kathy. Um, are there any further questions or comments? Kevin. Please tell um, our delightful faculty advisor that I said Zabars. Z A B A R S. Okay. So good deli. <laughs> Any other comments? <laughs> here. Okay. We'll take a vote. All in favor? Is it on here? All in favor? Okay. Seven zero. Um, and then the next is consideration of a request from uh, Sonia Medina um, for a trip during the current school year. And this is the first time, so this will come back next month, but Sonia is here and can ex explain the trip and what her plans are for that. Good evening, all. Um, I am Sonia Medina. I teach Spanish and French at the high school. Uh, the idea um, of this uh, trip came uh, after I found out that uh, the trip to Costa Rica was canceled. The students are going to come, I, I believe, but uh, our students uh, won't go. And um, I, I had some brochure on my desk, and I looked at, at one tour, and I, I, I realized that there were some sites that would be very interesting for a student to visit because I could um, tie them to the curriculum. So this trip is not open to everybody. This trip is open to students who are in Spanish level four, five, or six, uh, because the tour has been designed uh, for the student to uh, visit um, monuments that uh, we have studied in class during those years. And also, uh, in this tour, there is a place um, that um, would be visited uh, that is in relation to the Spanish Civil War. Uh, two years ago, I came here in front of you talking about the Spanish Civil War, which I'm still uh, teaching. It's one of my uh, fun topics that I like to talk about. And this is one of the, uh, also uh, one of the sites in the tour it includes uh, visiting a monument that was built by um, the prisoner of the Spanish Civil War. So I uh, tried to have it designed uh, in a way that um, all those places to visit will be directly connected with uh, curriculum. This is why it is only uh, offered for students uh, of a specific um, level. Um, I think I've explained everything that I could um, in the paper um, about this trip. I'm co considering now um, the possibility to go during the break of April. Uh, I would like not to be able to miss any school day, but um, uh, unfortunately with uh, any, actually any big um, organization you deal with, you only know, I would say a month before you leave, what, are, what is exactly day of departure, and they ask for you to be flexible because it depends on where they are, they would be able to um, uh, get some uh, seats. 
that's what I'm understanding. So I don't know exactly the date of the departure or uh, of, uh, of return. Uh, all I know is that it will be a nine-day trip. So if we were to leave on a Friday, we'd be returning, I believe, on a Saturday. If we were to leave on a Saturday, we'd be returning on a Sunday. Uh, I think that's how it, it would work. Okay. Are there any questions for Sonia? Nothing? Um, we're not taking a vote on No, this will right? come back next month. So. Okay. Okay. Um, so then we'll see you next month. We'll okay. Thank back. you very much. Okay. Thank you. Okay. And now we can move on to the superintendent's report. And it's a short report, but um, there have been, uh, Kevin has been the chair of the PASS committee for, for a number of years, and under my report, I've listed PASS um, because it isn't a separate committee, but um, it is an opportunity for Kevin to give a report on PASS uh, to the school board. Try and, try and make this brief. Uh, the General Advisory Committee, more fondly known as GAC, held its first meeting this year. And our, uh, our first meeting of every year, uh, one of the highlights is to meet with the students and have lunch with uh, students in various programs, um, which is always a real pleasure. Uh, this year was even more interesting in that we had the, uh, the music group come down and serenade us during lunch, uh, and they were really quite good. I think they would certainly all qualify for Cape Elizabeth's band and jazz groups, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I wanted to mention the, the, the three students that I lunched with. Uh, we had one young lady who's in the horticulture program her second year, who on graduation will be continuing at SMTC, but will also be entering her mother's business uh, with the ultimate goal of beginning her own horticulture-related business. Uh, we had another young lady who is in the third year of a health services program which will provide her with the opportunity for uh, entering into a vet veterinary sciences uh, program at, I believe it's SMTC, and she then plans to move on and obtain her doctor's degree in veterinary medicine. Um, and then finally, and most interesting, there was a 17-year-old young lady who uh, is taking the fashion merchandising course because she could not get bookkeeping and accounting at her home school. Curiously, she's also at 17 enlisted in the United States Army Reserve, who is now paying 100% of her college costs uh, once she graduates from high school. And in the meantime, she's being trained as a military police person. Um, so I, I don't think that, you know, these type of students fit what we commonly uh, ascribe to the past type student. We also had a very interesting report on the biotechnology program. There are spaces available. Unfortunately, because of budget issues last year, we didn't put the program to bed um, at the time that we normally would, so there was n insufficient time to get publicity out. The person who is coordinating that program will be visiting all of the sending high schools and the guidance counselors, as well as administrators if available, and would be available to our science department. Um, I, I'm really not uh, uh, big on science, uh, other than the earth sciences myself, but it looks like a very strenuous curriculum, and there is a prerequisite of biology uh, Bio, bio one or whatever uh, our equivalent is. Uh, so again, uh, you know, that's uh, certainly not what is commonly perceived of Portland Arts and Technical High School. So I, I just wanted to bring this to your attention. Um, we will be um, meeting tomorrow again to begin preliminary budget discussions, um, and hopefully we'll be able to bring back some uh, some good numbers for the rest of the board next month, I hope. Other than that, I would like to extend an invitation to all of the administrators, all of our guidance counselors, all of the board members to, uh, to visit PASS uh, at their convenience. They can coordinate that with me or do it on their own, but I, I think you'll be pleasantly surprised with uh, what you see going on in that building. It's uh, it's very exciting.
very exciting. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, and now we'll move on to the principal's report. Um, the high school, Jeff. Today, um, <clears throat> during the last period of the day, I had the opportunity to sit in with the social studies department as it was working on its part of developing a comprehensive local assessment system um, aligned with Maine's learning results. And it was quite interesting, actually, because the department had just given in its world history courses for ninth graders the first of their common assessments this, this year, which is related to geography standards. We've asked teachers to prepare common assessments uh, over the course of the year with the first to be given by the end of November and the social studies department had done considerable work over the last couple of years so they felt they were prepared to do that and it was fascinating to sit in with uh, Ray Cooper and Gretchen McNulty and Heather and Ted and and, um, and, um, and Dwight Ely and to sort of commonly score uh, against against one single rubric, the work that was done by the kids in the in the geography class. I think it's a it's a it's a wonderful exercise where the teachers get to learn an awful lot um, and begin to send some consistent messages to students about standards in classes and that kind of thing. Um, as a result of that, every time I attend the meetings that our our teachers are having on a regular basis, there are always a number of questions that come up, and a number of them will will raise their head before the board before the end of this year on more than one occasion. So I thought I'd just raise, talk about a couple of them. First of all, I think one of the I think the best thing that comes out of a common assessment system, um, for all the, the the work that it takes to produce it, is it forces teachers to have a conversation about what is a quality product, what is it that we want kids to learn and be able to do, um, and what is our standard of what's acceptable to demonstrate that they do know those things and are able to do those things. Um, and they can help one another through when there are particular teachers who seem to be having results, really strong results in some areas and others in other areas. They can have discussions about instructional practices. Um, so that's a, that's a very exciting part. A, lot of, a number of the unanswered questions are these. Um, what happens if a student doesn't perform um, adequately so that we can say with a straight face to the Commissioner of Education, as we must do beginning with this year's eighth grade class when they get to the high school next year, um, if a student doesn't make it. A number of students, a number of schools are telling students that they must do the work in summer school if they haven't completed it during a school year or they're adding on extra time during a school day or they're looking at ways to reallocate time during a school day to provide students with the extra assistance and extra support to get there. That's an unanswered question that, that we have to grapple with. Um, and it's not just at the high school, it's K-12, but because the graduation requirement applies specifically to the high school, as the high school, we, we tend to feel ourselves a little bit more under the gun about that. Um, related to the question of, and, I, and I've sort of overlapped with that, related to the question of what happens if a kid doesn't do it, at some point they are going to have to demonstrate that they master the standards, then it does become the school's responsibility to find a way to provide the support that they need. And sometimes that's in the form of, of after school time or flexible hours or adding school time to the school day or the big, 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 big questions um, that are looming not too far away. Um, a huge one um, that's a nitty gritty question but it came up a lot in the social studies department meeting today is what do report cards look like under a system which tries to report to parents not just the A or the B or the C or the D but how students are doing relative to the standards or the targets that have been identified in Maine's learning results. Um, and how do we keep track of all the data uh, that's generated as, we, as our teachers give, all, give these common assessments to students? Um, traditionally, our report card grades are fairly uninformative. They're A's, they're B's, they're C's, they're D's. And the truth is that those grades can mean different things depending on, um, they mean a little bit of, they mean a certain percentage of academic accomplishment. They mean a certain percentage of how hard the kid works. Uh, they may be influenced to some extent by the student's behavior in class or by the student's attendance. Um, and all those things are going to probably have to be separated and segregated out in the, in the way report cards appear in the future. At the same time, making sure that we're giving to colleges and universities the simple information that they want uh, as they look at our students and consider them for college admission or jobs consider our, or the Army considers our kids for post-secondary other than colleges and universities. 
Um, so there are lots of big, big, big questions, um, and we're, we're beginning to understand what they mean. Um, we're not beginning to understand what the answers to them are, and we have a lot to learn from other schools that are also struggling with these issues as they try to develop a, a comprehensive assessment system. It's a huge challenge. It's a huge challenge, and the teachers are taking it on and developing common assessments, um, and I think I think recognizing the value in it, um, also, frank, quite frankly, to some extent, being what, what the biggest fear is, is that teachers want to have this work be something that's really valuable and not get caught up in a paper shuffle, which, which feels bureaucratic and doesn't advance education. So that's, that's the sort of tightrope that we have to walk. To walk. Um, Hillary and Aaron mentioned, I wanted to mention a couple, a couple of technology issues that are happening at the high school. Uh, one is that we do have two mobile labs available at this point um, as a result of um, some budget discussions that we had at the end of last year. Uh, those mobile labs are up, they're working, teachers have started to use them. Um, it was fun going into Heather Sanborn's uh, Middle Eastern class a couple weeks ago. She was the first teacher to sign them out and use them. Um, and uh, <clears throat> to watch the kids in Heather's classroom get wireless connection to the internet. I know the middle school in Pond Cove, that's old hat by this time, uh, but it was a lot of fun at the high school to be able to do that, and Heather was really excited about that. Um, Hillary and Aaron mentioned um, the, first, the first real interactive um, use of our ATM or distance learning classroom. It was a virtual field trip um, that, that our students were able to participate with students from three other schools, I think, um, in talking to and asking questions of and listening to um, Tom Allen and his opponent for the first congressional um, seat. Um, all the reports of that were very, very positive, and my understanding is, I wasn't able to sit in on it, but my understanding is that the technological glitches were very, very few um, and that things worked pretty well. And it appeared that from the reports I was getting, and it's not surprising that, if you remember, we're using the old lecture hall for that purpose. The space that we have available in our school to be able to accommodate these kind of virtual field trips or classes going in is, is much, uh, certainly much larger and much nicer, I think, than, than most schools were able to devote to it. In most cases, it's small classrooms in schools. So I think we've taken lemons and made lemonade uh, with the lecture hall so that it's being put to some, some good use. Um, so it's exciting to, to see that come to fruition as well. Um, as Aaron and Hillary also mentioned, they're gone now. Um, we did have, I think, a largely positive homecoming week. Um, we did make some changes, and some, a lot of things went well, and there are some things that I would do differently uh, as well. Uh, we have learned some things about the dances. We did have enough chaperones according to the standards that we had used in the past. I think what we learned is that we need to have even more. Uh, and that's unfortunate to say. Um, every school in the area, in the state, in the nation deals with issues of drinking. I've said it before to the board and to other folks. Um, the issue which I think distinguishes CAPE is that the, um, um, the degree of brazenness um, and the degree of sophistication that our students bring to the issue of di dis disguising um, their drinking is rather startling to me. Um, in other schools, it's been relatively easy to figure out what's going on and to get to the bottom of it. It's much more difficult here, much more difficult here. Um, so we need a, a beefed up presence so we can continue to have positive experiences at dances and homecoming events and other things. That's my report. Questions? Uh, Jeff, I just I really wanted to take this opportunity to thank you for the extra effort that went into the homecoming. I mean, I heard a lot of positive things from um, some of the students, and uh, they were very excited about the activities d during the whole week. Um, their impression of the dance was similar to what I think you observed, and I really uh, encourage you and commend you for tackling that issue um, because I think uh, you will eventually provide that type of opportunity for future high schoolers rather than losing that opportunity. And uh, I just, I know parents were involved in the homecoming. Yep, they were. And it's great. I was, you know, and the teachers uh, showed up and chaperoned and participated in tug of wars and cleaning up and that type of thing. Um, I hope that eventually, just like they have a prom committee, that um, you can see homecoming grow to a point where the students will take on some of the responsibility <coughs> of planning their homecoming and being responsible for that. 
we did have a, a fair number of students. It was a sort of last minute uh, there, but I was impressed that there were about 12 to 15 students who regularly showed up at 6.30 in the morning to, uh, for the last couple of weeks before it to try to put things together. And a number of them uh, have come to me, and, and as a result of them coming to me, we're actually going to be um, having a debriefing meeting next week and begin to think about some of the ways we can do things differently and better. Um, there will be some fairly incriminating photos coming out of the homecoming activities in the gym. Um, I'm not sure well they'll be published, but um, oh. Mark Tinkham is, is the, the subject of a number of photos with pie in his face and, um, and other things like that. Nothing incriminating. You know, right? <laughs> there will be some humorous photos coming out of the, some, some of the homecoming activities. Um, Carrie Curtis on a little tricycle was a sight to see as well in the cafeteria on Friday afternoon. Great. Don't, so, thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you, Jeff. Um, the middle school. Uh, in an effort to shorten the typically lengthy middle school reports, I'm just going to go <laughs> say that um, my two Elises said it all. Thank you. <laughs> um, all kidding aside, um, we've had some interesting weeks at the at the middle school. Um, they did mention many of the things that I'd like to touch upon, but maybe I can put a different spin on a few of the things. Um, seventh grade is at Kiev. Um, it is earlier this year. Um, I'm wondering how they packed for it and how they're spending solo and their outdoor, outdoor time. But the uh, important day to mention is Wednesday. Wednesday is a parent's day. And uh, several of the members of the board have experienced that before. Uh, I think one has a chance to experience it this time. It's, a, it's an important day. And uh, you, you should go. And uh, it's a great time where they bring the community in and, uh, and some interesting discussions. So that, that's a great day to go. Um, our eighth grade did have a, a, a great week with the uh, coastal cleanup. A big thanks to Bob Malley. Um, they helped pick up 40 bags uh, in the community. Um, and wouldn't have been possible to do without his help. Um, progress reports mentioned, they do go home October 15th. Um, the seventh grade is also the, the laptops. It, it's just an amazing thing for me. Um, I taught seventh grade for 20 years, and I walk around, and I, I, I really feel like I'm missing something. Um, I walk into rooms. I don't even know I'm there. Um, it's so quiet. They're so intently focused. Uh, the staff is dedicated. They're putting in an incredible amount of energy into it. Uh, I don't want to steal any thunder from Gary's report tonight, but uh, I am... Uh, the recipient of many of the emails and the uh, time that they're putting in it to, to organize it and prepare it and present it uh, is just amazing and I, I miss being a part of that energy of the seventh grade team. Um, we have uh, we've had three parent meetings and uh, and gone over the uh, the usages and the guidelines as required by the state and I think maybe Gary will speak more to that and I think they were quite successful. Um, we possibly do have a few makeups of the makeup of the makeup but We'll get that done. Um, we have uh, conducted three fire drills and uh, have worked out some kinks with our alarm system. Um, we have uh, moved into the downstairs of the 30s building, which is a fantastic uh, achievement for us. Um, Scott Labby no longer has a traveling health class. He has a, has a class which he uses all the time. Uh, Margaret Welch has her accelerated and remedial language arts. Um, in one of the other classrooms, and uh, our World Languages has their lab located in uh, an office space down there. And, uh, and Sarah Simmons, with her professional development library and office, is in the former community services space. So we're very excited to have that space, and we will put it to, to great use. Um, Scott Labby and I continue to pilot the program for um, administering middle school athletics. And uh, it's, uh, it's a program that we... Uh, we uh, are going to document the hours that we've put together and how much time we spend with it. Um, it's an effort to um, alleviate a, a high school administration that has um, probably one of the most numerous sports programs in the state. I think the last time we looked at it, we were number two um, offerings. Um, we have an incredible high participation rate, so um, we're trying to help with the, uh, the management of that. Um, strictly speaking, we're really involved in the advertising, the hiring of the coaches, the daily support. Um, and going out there and making sure they have everything that they need um, and, and handling all the personnel issues that would normally go to the high school um, come to us. So we're, we're working on that. Um, fall sports, as the girls mentioned, are in full swing. Um, we have uh, several coaches that are out there doing a great job and some, 
some interesting ways of going about um, dealing with our high numbers of participation. Um, we have uh, Joe Henriksen, who's doing the seventh grade um, girls soccer, uh, Sarah Kinsella, who's doing the eighth grade um, girls soccer. We have Gary Newell, who is doing seventh grade boys, uh, Dave Witten, uh, who is doing the eighth grade boys. And in the soccer program, we had the benefit of um, Casco Bay Youth Program, who lent us the services of one of their coach, Lee Nichols, for over a month and a half. And what we did with Lee is we had him rotate from boys to girls from 7th to 8th and work down and breaking down the drills and just providing another coach to, uh, to make those practices more efficient. Um, and any time we can do that, if you ever go out and see how many kids we have out there on a small, small space, it, it makes it a better experience for the kids. Uh, in field hockey, we have Jeremy LaRose and Heidi LaRose, and Sue's here. Um, she has uh, offered the... Um, uh, days um, to help out and uh, we have our 7th and 8th grade on a certain day of the week go down and work with the high school staff mainly I think with Lori Broadhurst now and uh, and that's another great opportunity for them to uh, to get um, more one-on-one -on -one work with the high school staff down on the high school field and that's that's proven to be another way of reaching more kids uh, in providing a quality experience with the middle school athletics and uh, last but not least, we have Sue Ray doing the tennis and uh, Joe Doan and Jerry McQueenie heading up our outstanding cross-country team. Um, I think that's it. Questions? Questions or comments for John? Okay. Thank you, John. Thanks. Okay. And now Pond Cove. Hi. Um, first off, I'd just like to say that all of us at Pond Cove are very proud of Kelly Hassan's accomplishments, and we're honored to have her as a peer. Um, once again, we're grateful to have late start days. We put them to good use. It's a very productive use of our time. We started this year with uh, long-term plans on Japanese lesson study. The entire month of October, the two team leader meetings and the two faculty meetings will be devoted to uh, working on grade level lesson studies so that by the time Mr. Eismeyer comes back at the end of October, we'll, be, we'll have something to show him. Uh, on October 15th and 16th, we'll have Jane Kerr as a visiting editor, uh, visiting author, I'm sorry, uh, followed by the book fair on October 16th. Kindergarten would like to thank the Pond Cove Parents Association for a mini grant to purchase the Computer CD Package Easy Book, which is a way for teachers to publish students' writing. And the Cape Elizabeth Education Foundation has given some grants to some groups at Pond Cove. Um, Ogden Williams in the fourth grade for their trip to New Orleans Living History as part of their main unit. Uh, Becky Swift for uh, Summer Literary Institute, Kelly Hassan in the first grade for Digital Camera Technology, and Linda Paul for Movement Theater, Movement Theater Residency for Kindergarten. And lastly, speaking of photographs, um, you probably ought to have Tom Eismeyer show you some of the photographs that were taken as a send-off we gave him last Friday. <laughs> because we had a lot of native Japanese garb, very colorful, uh, lots of fans, and, and lots of native food. Thank you. Any questions? No questions. Thank, Thank you, you, Carmen. Um, we will move on to the committee reports. Um, the finance subcommittee. Elaine? Uh, yes, the Finance Committee uh, met prior to our regular school board meeting this evening. Um, we did have a review of the annual financial report, and that in also included an invitation to attend the Town Council workshop this Thursday uh, to hear a presentation by uh, the auditor that prepared that report. Um, we also spent the majority of the time in a discussion of the format for a program, program cost benefit analysis that Pauline has put together for us for uh, the various programs at the high school level. Um, this was a request by the school board. Um, it initiated during the building committee process as we looked at some of the programming issues and we have since seen some benefit as we head into 
future budget sessions and start looking at curriculum issues and program issues at all three of our schools. so this will be done or at least at at the middle school level also. and we had some input from some of the school board members on some additional ah factors that might be included in determining the cost per student on some of the programs. and i think that was there was an appropriation report and that was looked at by individual members. okay. that's it. thank you elaine. um the policy subcommittee. susan. um at our so ah october meeting we um spent most of the time going over the um guidelines and procedures for the ibook the laptops that gary and and the other middle schools across the state had prepared and um we'll be looking at that later um that was kind of a priority because the the laptops cannot go home until we were able to kind of get some procedures around that and although they're not policies um i think the middle school faculty and tom and gary felt that it was important to get school board school board input input because it is dealing with some expensive um equipment that is actually not our property it's state property and and so we just wanted to make sure that everybody took a good look at it um in addition to that we did um make some changes with the input from the board at our last meeting on the athletic trips policy and we'll be looking at that again tonight um and i also have distributed to members of the board um a status report that we're thinking about using as kind of a reporting tool to keep you and other interested parties we haven't definitely defined who those parties are but keep um interested parties apprised of where each of these policy areas is through the years we're getting work done on them so that you can kind of see where we stand i think right now we've got 14 identified policy areas and what we need is feedback on the form how can it be improved and also of the content is there something that you remember that we talked about we were going to be looking at this year and you don't see it on this list let um one of us on the policy committee know and our next meeting is actually not going to be on its normal wednesday it's on the first tuesday of november it'll be tuesday november 5th at 12 noon okay. thank you susan um in the building committee uh actually the last building committee meeting was uh the end of september on september 26th and we discussed the high school throughout the whole meeting and um that meeting we had a lot of discussion for coming up with four options for the high school in terms of dollars um that will be presented to the school board next month um in a very detailed review um you know with the architect um presenting each option so that the school board will be able to um make a recommendation um back to the building committee well i don't know if that's right a recommendation right no the the, the process for the, the school board would approve um whatever options they feel are most appropriate and then that would go to the town council right the, the recommendation is from the building committee to the school board and and they would choose one of those options that goes on to the town council our next building committee meeting um is at the end of this month on October 30th and the building committee at that time will be focusing on Pan Cove and we will be um using the same format basically coming up with um several options for the Pan Cove edition to be be presented to the school board at the same time next month on November 12th um and i that's that's it for the building committee um we can move on to unfinished business and we have a second reading for an athletic um trip policy season um you have in your packets uh a copy of the second reading we actually um had discussed this at our last board meeting and some of the issues were the timing that um any athletic trip be brought for approval to the board before fundraising actually begin um and some other recommendations that the board made so we we just want to make sure that you think that we've heard that and incorporated that into this policy as it stands now so 
are there any comments or questions on the policy as it's presented in our packet do i recommend that we accept the policy as it's written for the second reading ok i recommend that we accept the athletic trip policy as it stands at this point okay. do we have a motion it, is that a question or no a motion? um second. i'll either move or second i, I am not sure that's a form of Susan That's was a making a motion or a recommendation. Right. I move. Okay. <laughs> a second. Kevin. Um, any further questions or comments? I think I, it, it's important because this is something a bit different just to, to, to highlight um, for everyone's benefit what this, what this means. And, and I know we're talking about the changes. But basically with all athletic trips, and we do have trips um, where teams may go out of state, and this is what this is addressing, overnight out-of-state trips. This policy states that, um, first of all, uh, if teams are going to fundraise for this kind of activity, they need to have school board approval of the trip prior to that fundraising beginning. School board also encourages that the trips um, stay within the New England area. Um, it also makes reference to the fact that if a team is going to go on a trip, um, then all potential members of, of that team need to have the opportunity to go on the trip unless it, the timing is such that the tryout was held and you know who the team is going to be. Otherwise, if there is not a tryout, then everyone who wants to be on that team needs to have that, that opportunity. And then the other important piece of this is that um, we're really asking for uh, what the purpose of the trip is and what are the benefits as opposed to the cost, so that if we go on a trip like this, um, some of them can be quite expensive, and will we get the same benefit if we stay local? Uh, and is it really necessary to spend that kind of money on an athletic trip? Um, and, and, and it may be, it may be that kind of experience, but this kind of outlines all those concerns, I think, that we've had over the last couple of years. But Tom, this would pertain to anything, even if you were just going overnight out of state and going overnight so you weren't getting up at 3 in the morning to leave early, right? Right, except if it's uh, in-state overnight, which we do have when right. uh, the, the swim team might be going to Bangor or, or those would be in-state overnights. That wouldn't be, this is out of state overnight trips, this policy. Okay, even if there's no fundraising. Even if there's no fundraising, you still need approval for an out-of-state overnight trip. And is this, this is for any time of the year, not just during their season or pre-season? When you say any time of the year, if it's during the summer, we really have, they can, they teams can, can do what they want during the summer, right? right yeah. But if once the season starts, for instance, we have teams that go during the summer, but it's in that August time frame. And those have come for your approval. Um, I think last year we finally did get the, the request came in June. In the past, it's come in August and it's been late. But what we're asking for those trips, uh, the soccer team I think goes on a, a yearly trip. We've asked that request to come in June, um, but there is an extent there is an extensive fundraising for that particular trip. My only concern relates to something you just said, Tom, about you know trips that are not during the school year or during the season. If effectively a Cape Elizabeth school team is going out of state and it's going with its coaches who are in theory employees or approved supervisors of that team by us, then I still feel that it should be approved by us, well, regardless of what time of the year it is. Exactly, but first of all, according to the MPA, a coach cannot go on a trip with their team out of season. Um, they can have no contact except during the summer. I, I understand what the MPA rule is, but I, maybe I'm confused, but weren't coaches going with the baseball trip? That's during the, that was during, during the season. The season. Oh, okay. The April vacation was during the season. Right. But if, it's out of, if they're going in February with the team, then they, they just can't do that. They can't have contact. I'm just, you know, with... No. with it's a concern that but it, let's say the MPA said it was okay. If the employee if right. it's going over. If, if, the, if, if, if the MPA, for whatever reason, said it was okay, they would still need our approval to do that. Yep. 
Jason, can we take a vote? Um, all in favor? Oh, wait a minute, I just have one oh. more question. I'm sorry. I, I'm just thinking um, in terms of that cross country meet where the kids got up really early to go to that, they wouldn't have had two months worth of notification. Mm -hmm. Just wondering if, the, if we want an out in here. Well, you always have an out. You can, at any time, you can waive your policy. In other words, what Jennifer is talking about, there's a, a particular meet, but my guess is schedules are, they know the cross-country schedule, for example, months in advance. It shouldn't be something, I know it was this year, but it shouldn't right, be. Right, and I, I'm just, I'm trying to. If something came up and it were some, it were where you wanted to waive your, your, you could waive your policy of needing to consider in one meeting and vote the next at any time if it were a situation where it couldn't happen because it was qualified for meet or was a special meet, you can do that. But in that particular case, that's something that scheduling should take care of. They should know and they right. should and know. Right, and they can stay overnight anyway. Right. I, was, I was just trying to come up with scenarios where... I think it'll force, force them to make sure they have their schedules well in advance. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Are there any other questions or comments? And we can take a vote. All in favor? Seven zero. Um, we can move on to new business. Um, consideration of the superintendent's recommendation for athletic fee positions for fall and winter. Um, you have. In front of you, um, a list of returning high school nominations uh, for coaching positions and um, a middle school fall coaching position. Um, I'll read through the list. Jim Ray, varsity basketball. Jerry McQuinney, JV boys basketball. Kim Rovzar, JV girls basketball. Doug Worley, indoor track. Kerry Curtis, varsity swimming. Ben Raymond, ben Raymond assistant swimming. Steve Olet, ice hockey. Kurt Brown, assistant ice hockey. Drew Riddle, assistant ice hockey. Jeremy LaRose, uh, assistant indoor track. A middle school position, David Witten, eighth grade soccer. Um, going on to the high school um, new positions, Russell Davis, uh, freshman boys basketball. Ron Kerstead, varsity girls basketball, Sarah Wolf, diving coach, and Devin Morrill, Nordic ski coach. I think those are all the coaching positions. So they're all filled for winter, or that's all you have right now? That's what I have, and I think they're all filled. <coughs> the middle school has some I know that they're still working on. And, and John made a um, reference to where we are trying to pilot this year, and the district leadership team will be reviewing a proposal, and it will be coming to the school board, and the whole athletic structure as far as administrative of that, we're, administration of that, we're, we're trying to be more consistent with our policies, our hiring practices, um, so we're in process, and we're... Um, um, John and, and Scott have taken on added responsibility in trying to um, be consistent, at least at the middle school, with the hiring practices, how we handle those, how we advertise, so that we do that the same for every position. So our hope is by the end of the school year, we'll have everything together as far as what that structure would be and how we handle things at both schools with a recommendation that will be for maybe a short-term recommendation and also the long-term goal which obviously might have budgetary implications, might not be able to be fully implemented right away, but this is the way we'd like to see it. So um, we are moving in that direction. Okay. Do we have a motion? Susan. I move that we accept the superintendent's recommendations for athletic fee positions for fall and winter 2002-2003. A second? George? Um, any comments or questions? Um, okay, all in favor? 7-0. Next, we have a con consideration. 
co-curricular. And um, there you have, there's a number of co-curricular positions that are all uh, budgeted positions at Pine Cove, the middle school, high school, and system-wide positions. Um, we have something that's uh, a bit unique with um, some, a senior at the high school, which I think will be um, a good experience for the, for the senior to get involved um, that's going to be working with um, the drama club at Pond Cove. Do we have a motion? Kevin? I move that we accept the superintendent's recommendation on filling co-curricular positions. Um, a second? Susan? Um, any questions or comments? Um, I just have a comment that I think um, to have a senior running this program for us at Pine Cove is fabulous. And last year, she shadowed along with Judy Ferrante. Um, and to, to just have the opportunity for a high school student to do this, I think, is wonderful. Um, we can take a vote. All in favor? 7-0. Okay. Next on our list is a consideration of the building committee recommendation to provide options to the school board for the proposed addition to Pond Cove that will include space or the opportunity for expansion with regard to future program and or enrollment needs. Um, the the past, um, the past month and the next upcoming workshop that we have, we are discussing program needs in each of our schools. And we just came off of a meeting um, for program needs at Pond Cove. We will be discussing the middle school and the high school at next month's meeting. So based off of the input and the information that we heard from parents, from teachers, from everyone um, that was at that meeting, um, we, we need a motion to um, recommend to the building committee um, that, that they provide options um, for the Pond Cove edition. So, do we have a motion? Elaine will do it. Elaine's good. I'll try it. Okay, <laughs> Elaine. <laughs> um, I move uh, to recommend that the building, uh, the school board gives direction for a proposed addition to Pond Cove that will include space uh, or the opportunity for expansion for future Pond Cove programming needs or enrollment issues. Okay, thank you. A second? Kathy? Um, are there any other questions or comments? No. Okay, all in favor? 7-0. Okay, the next item on our list is consideration of a job share proposal. Um, as you're, you are aware, all job share proposals um, come before the school board for approval. Um, this is a bit unique because of the timing, but we do have a situation at Pond Cove in the guidance area. Uh, due to some personal considerations, um, we are in a position to, to propose a job share uh, between uh, Patricia Wright and Karen Niehoff. Um, Patricia is presently our full-time person, would go to um, um, a half-time position. They both share the benefits. There's no cost, additional cost to the district but at the present time is probably the best model for the school and would, would probably benefit the students for the rest of this, uh, the rest of this school year. Do we have a motion to support the job share proposal? Uh, Kathy? I move that we consider or do we consider or accept, accept the job chair proposal for Pong Cove guidance. Okay, second. Kevin? Um, any comments or questions? None? Okay, all in favor? 7-0. Next on our list is uh, the middle school laptop guidelines. Again, Susan had uh, mentioned that this was brought to the policy committee for discussion. It's not policy. Um, 
but this is a very unique situation. I'll let Gary, if you'd like to speak to it for, for just a second. We, um, again, it's these laptops, it's, their, it's expensive equipment, it's state equipment. Um, so this is something we haven't done before. So the, the Gary and uh, the administration of the middle school really felt that these guidelines were something we needed to have and, and the stamp of approval by the school board, I think would just give it that much more meaning. Yes, uh, the guidelines were developed um, basically by using the models at the pilot schools. They, there were nine pilot schools around the state uh, last spring, and many of those schools developed guidelines, and that's where we've kind of picked and choose and, and borrowed from all of those and meld them together to what we thought would fit here for Cape Elizabeth. Um, we, the kids are excited, the parents are excited to get these iBooks home, and we'd like to get them home as soon as possible, but we do need to have some kind of safeguards in place. It's a twelve, thirteen hundred dollar piece of equipment. Um, what's going to happen if it gets damaged? But you know, we need to have some some procedures, some guidelines in place, and that's what this is an attempt to do. These draft guidelines right here. Um, I think the main school management is working on policy level type language that might go before this. These are really procedures and guidelines. Mm -hmm. uh, but we need some kind of support, backing from, from a school board level when we start working with these and with parents. We've had our parent orientation meetings. We had one in the morning and two, last, uh, two evenings last week. We, I'm not sure the exact number of parents that, that showed up, but a, a vast majority. Uh, we may be missing a few. We may have to have one one makeup meeting. Um, we had the opportunity to meet with the policy committee between the first meeting and the, and the second and third. So the second and third were, were presented a little bit differently after we'd had some, some guidelines and we actually changed what, what some of the, the handout a little bit. Uh, we understand that there may be some optional insurance coming from the state that parents could opt into. We, we're still waiting for the, for the final details on that. Um, this is a new program, and districts all around the state are struggling with these same issues. Some districts are putting their foot down and say, no, they don't go home until policies and, and things are, are decided upon. And uh, we're kind of in the middle. We think this is a, a valuable tool. We, the kids are excited about getting it home, and we'd like to get it home sooner than later. Um, so these might be kind of a, a stopgap measure until things are finalized and then have a final copy. So I'd open it up to, I'll try to answer any questions, comments. When will the kids be able to take the laptops home after this decision is made to approve the guidelines? What we said, that would be, that would be a part of it. And they would have to, parent, before they, the laptops could go home, parents would have to attend one of the meetings. So they would have to have gone to one of those, those meetings. There is a sign off sheet as is one of the, the last pages in here. That would need to be signed. Um, we have one last final thing that we need to do, a little bit of training with the email and getting emails issued out. So we're looking at probably the end of October would be the earliest after getting all of this logistics done. So it would have to be some kind of support from, from the board. The parents would have to attend the meeting. The parents would have to sign off the responsibility. Then they could go home. Any other questions for Gary? Well, Susan? I, I just, um, a couple of things. Gary, do you have a copy of this in front of you, the Apple iBook take-home guidelines? The take-home ones? Yes. OK. Uh, and the third paragraph, let's see. Under the line at the top, one, two, third paragraph, it says a completed and signed take-home summary sheet from a parent or guardian explaining must be on file. Is there something missing there, or is it really supposed to read that way? It isn't supposed to read that way. I, okay. I, in fact, I circled that. Explaining shouldn't be there, I don't believe. There was a, the original policy that was written by uh, the Lyman Moore Pilot School had a note. So basically, there was a, a note explaining the days that they were taking it home, and it was signed out each and every time. We're talking about a one-time sign-out, as opposed to signing out each and every time. So I must have missed some of the language there when I... Okay, so we'll just kind of clean that up. That'll have to be corrected. 
Okay. Um, and the other comment I had was um, on the second page of that same document, third paragraph from the end, it says, if you as the parent guardian would rather that the computers not be brought home, please inform the school. I would feel more comfortable if we indicate that by, you know, on the enclosed form or whatever. What I don't want is a bunch of parents calling the middle school office, informing the school, or wondering if they have to do that in addition. I think it would just help if we clarify by, by checking the correct box on the form or whatever. Right, and that is one of the boxes. Right. Right, and I just think Warm, if we reference to, it there. Just to clarify it there, yes. Right. That's, I can add that. Is this form that's in our packet the same form that the parents got at all three of those meetings? No. The first group did not get this form. The second and third group did because we met, because I met with the policy committee, you know, after the, after the first meeting, mm -hmm. but before the second and third meetings. So the form is a little bit different. They asked, uh, that we put the value of the computer in there. They asked to have the, the check boxes down at mm -hmm. the bottom. Mm -hmm. Now, because, I mean, I was at the first meeting, right. um, and the, there was a form that I got with something to sign and turn back in. So how will you let those parents know that that isn't the correct form? These were all draft policies that we gave them. These were just draft sheets that we handed out at the meeting. Before the, this would, the final version of this would get mailed home and get signed by parents and get returned. Okay. So the ones that went out at the meeting were just draft to share the information that we had so far, and there was draft all over the bottom of them. Okay, so parents weren't supposed to do anything with that Not with those. That was just an informational okay. packet. And so the new packet will be sent will be home mailed. when? <laughs> As soon as I get some guide, guideline, the, the thing that's missing is a cover letter that would go along with this okay. that, that we talked about. Another suggestion the policy committee had was to maybe have two copies of that sign-off sheet, so if, because if you sign it and you turn it in, then you don't have a copy of it. So maybe mm -hmm. keep, a, keep a second copy for the parent and, and a signed copy gets turned into the school, mm -hmm. which I thought was a good idea. Yeah. Okay. So it sounds like all of this will be worked out at some point before the end of the month. Is, Correct. is what you're saying, and then that's, the kids... That's, that's my hope, yes. Okay. Okay. I have a question. The, the insurance yes. that's going to be made available to the parents when the computer leaves the school. Well, no. <laughs> I'm sorry, I missed that. <laughs> Not necessarily when it leaves the school. Well, go ahead, you know. There, I'm hearing that the state is developing some kind of insurance through Maine Municipal or, or the, what's the outfit that does our insurance? Maine School, Maine School Management. Management. They're supposed to be coming out with some kind of an optional parent insurance package. They've been supposed to come out with this for several weeks. Mm -hmm. We still don't have the information. But as soon as that does come out, that we were hoping that that would be available to go with this packet. Yeah. Um, we were hearing that there might be an insurance package available for $50 or less, less that parents could um, opt into, and that would take care of their responsibility if something did happen at home. Now, if that insurance policy doesn't come out until after we fine-tune this and we have a parent who says that they want to purchase that optional insurance when it becomes available and something happens to that that meantime, becomes a sticky meantime, situation. Responsible. You, who's responsible? Yeah. Until that, it, yeah. until, I mean, it, it just simply indicates that it's still their responsibility, until right. even though it's not been offered by the state. Mm -hmm. Okay. We were hoping that we'd have this stuff sooner than later, and things, things are just taking a little bit longer. We were hoping that the state would have worked out all of these little things through the pilot program. But, um, some districts aren't even holding parent orientation meetings. They're waiting to get all this information first. We, we're willing, if the parents are willing to sign the responsibility, we're willing to let them go home sooner than later and get them in the, in the students' hands at home. Gary, I know yes. this stickler at the policy meeting, um, and I'm still wordsmithing here for you. Okay. Um, I like wordsmiths, so please under, help me out. Under the responsibility, um, where the optional insurance is. 
I, I think in an effort to make it clearer, we ought to put in something like, although not available at this time, optional insurance will become available or, it's, or whatever, just so they know that they can't get it. And maybe on the box that they check, I agree to take full responsibility. We ought to stick in there, including financial responsibility, because um, I know you, you put in the prices. We, what? I think the original intent, the policy committee, was to have that statement go in the cover letter so you wouldn't have to then go back and change all these forms. That was the, one of the, that was supposed, that whole explanation of the insurance was going to go in the cover letter, that it's not available at this time. Because okay. otherwise you have to go back and change all the forms again. Okay. Well, but it needs to be said. I mean, some, I, right. just, I just want it really clear. <laughs> but the forms are what people sign, so that's right. our legal obligation. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's why I would prefer to have it on what they have to sign. That's just for me personally. Then, oh, I didn't get the cover letter. And uh, I'm kind of thinking if Gary can bear with us, it probably we do want to make it really clear on the form that people sign that they're accepting up to a $1,300 liability. So. Gary, that too. Yeah. yeah, did you hear Jen's, because I think the cover letter, yes, I think we need to address it, but I also do think we need it on this form. So, Gary, did you hear Jen's suggestions, because I? Yes, I have where to that first them? line, that first box, I, I agree to take full responsibility, including financial responsibility for the Apple, Apple iBook while it, my child has signed it out for home use, something to that effect. Something to the effect yeah. that I understand yeah. that this could be up to a $1,300 obligation. Now, that is above under responsibility. Do you want that as long as you have on that, that line? Because if you look up underneath responsibility, right. under. replacement costs of the iBook are twelve to $1,300. Replacement okay. costs yeah. for a screen. I think if you put financial mm -hmm. in that. Oh, just the word financial? Yep. Don't you think? Because he's got under responsibility how much it actually would be. Okay. I don't know. I mean. Mm -hmm. that, so that was your suggestion was to just reiterate that it's a financial responsibility. As well as. Any other responsibility? Okay. I mean, also, because you, you're suggesting they have to use it with adult supervision, that's other responsibility mm -hmm. as opposed to the mm -hmm. financial. Mm. And then what was the other one to reiterate that Just there is under the insurance. optional insurance and something about, although it's not available at this time, whatever, um, it will become, or it's anticipated that it will become available. But is that next to one of the boxes? No, that wasn't in the box. Um, that was just, I, I wasn't, I guess I had forgotten about the cover letter, so I don't know if that's all that important. Because the little box is when it becomes available. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's pretty clear that it's not available yet. <laughs> I would assume. Right. But Elaine's question was, are, are they financially responsible if they want the insurance, but until they get it, are they financially responsible? Do we need to say that oh. one more time? It seems to I me think. that. Does it seem if they, clear? If they don't want the financial responsibility, then they need to check that they don't want their child to use it right. until they can buy the insurance. Right. But as Elaine said, if they check that they want it, and, and a week later it's broken, Right. Are they clear that even though they wanted it, right. because they didn't have it, they are financially responsible for the full amount? I think it's clear. Okay. I would, first of all, I would take out any reference to insurance until there is a sur an insurance program in place. Okay. That's number one. Number two is if we're, we're hot on insurance, we should probably contact our own insurance carrier and find out what our insurance carrier would charge to insure the laptops and then cost that out to the individual parent. Uh, there, are, uh, there are other companies that will do this, and Gary has another company. Um, the reason we're holding off on MS, MSMA is that it probably will be, in, because they're going to do the whole state, it'll just be Oh, uh, understood. Right. But we don't know that that's going to happen, uh, right. and I'm just you know, don't want to assume that that will happen. It, it could become a nightmare for somebody. And the other comment is uh, on page two, Gary, it says, if the book is stolen while signed out to you, it should be reported to the local police authorities and Cape Elizabeth Middle School personnel immediately. 
It does not say that the individual who signed it out and or their family is financially responsible even though it was allegedly stolen. That was a question in one of the parent meeting, meetings. Well, it seems to me that if they're in possession of the laptop, regardless of what happens to it, if they can't bring it to school the next day, they're financially responsible for it. I, you know, with the number of attorneys in this town and the number of jailhouse lawyers in our schools, i.e. to students, if I broke my laptop, I would simply report it stolen. And I also think that there is, you know, you know, um, th thinking of my own son and daughter, the number of things that have been left on baseball fields and libraries, on school buses, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, um, which will then be reported as stolen. Because no kid loses anything when they, anything when they get home to mom and dad. Somebody stole it. So I, I, I really think that you, we have to be clear that regardless, that the, if the, the parents allow the student to sign it out, that the, the parents are financially responsible for anything that happens to this computer, including theft, including leaving it at the beach. Thank you. We hope it doesn't go to the beach. Well, we, ho we would hope not, but I, I think some of us know better. I can add that line in that, you know, about the take-home one. Parents are financially responsible for <coughs> the stolen laptops. Something to that effect. Mm -hmm. I mean, if everyone else agrees with. You. No, I think that's. No, I, I agree, but I and I also think that you know a simple statement such as once the laptop leaves school grounds, you are financially responsible for it. Yeah. You know, I mean, because that covers everything. You're, you're everything that could happen right. to it. You're expected to. Um, use it responsibly and, and you have and, and you're held accountable i mean it does, we can go through every possible scenario and just this, this thing could be mm -hmm. 15 pages long it's just i mean say it in a basic way that mm -hmm. says if you approve it to leave then you have responsibility right. something happens it's you whatever happens you know yeah whatever happens mm -hmm. and maybe you've got that maybe we're we're going too far with this whole thing but it sounds like what you're me recommending is right in this responsibility section where it says if the iBook is stolen while sound out to you, if we just put one bullet before that that addresses the issues that, that you brought up, which is if anything happens to it once it leaves school property, mm -hmm. the parents are financially responsible. Yeah, we can do that. I wouldn't even clarify it as saying once it leaves school property because it can be lost, stolen, and damaged the minute you walk through the school walk out the doors, but you're still on school property. Once it's signed out. So once it's signed out. Once yeah. it's signed okay. out. Okay. Okay. I mean, the, you know, the, those, I'm just thinking of some of the arguments I would make if my son or daughter had a laptop right. and something happened to it. I would say to you, it was stolen. It doesn't say I'm responsible for this. It simply says report it to the police in the school. Right. You know, elsewhere it says you're financially responsible. If it's, law, if it's damaged or broken. So therefore, you must have excluded that, that situation. That's the way I would look at it. You know, I also think another good point that Kevin brought up is about the insurance. That um, unless we know that we have the insurance or have the capability of getting it for the parents, um, to not, you know, maybe in the cover letter to mention that it's possible in the future, but not a place to check off that they assume that they're getting it right now. Yeah, that's probably true. And would, I wonder if homeowners, if people's homeowners would cover. No. Didn't you check? We checked um, that and it doesn't cover. It wouldn't? At least Paul, no, didn't you check into that, Paul? That or Nancy did? Will not cover it, yeah. right. I think the problem is that it's owned by the state. state. It's not it's your not property. It's not your property, it's the state's property. I know, property. but your car insurance will cover a rental. Uh, they, they did checking, and I think, Gary, I don't know if it was Nancy or some, through some of those meetings, they've checked into that, and, and most homeowners will not cover it. Right. Okay. That's, that's the information we're getting. Yeah. <laughs> that's scary. Not just... I can do that. I can 
move the insurance to the cover letter any reference to it yeah because insurance isn't a responsibility mm -hmm. no. it doesn't even come under that no. No. And, right. and one of the plans that's mentioned in the, the state guidebook is is a, an insurance Safeway I think is the company and you can do that but it's, I think it's a group thing so it's kind of like all or nothing so you can't just have a, you know select few we did take a poll at the second and the third parent meeting and asked how many people would be interested in insurance and it was an overwhelming majority of, mm. you know almost unanimous really mm -hmm. so I think parents really want yeah. that well you know it makes sense mm -hmm. <laughs> okay okay um, are there any other questions or comments for Gary I, I have a general just one more question okay sorry um, if a, if a student has one, one checked out and they can't put it in their lockers and they can't bring it to the athletic field and I see that they're under signing out, their arrangements are supposed to be made with parents to pick up the iBook at the school before the student goes to a practice. If there is a, a laptop found in someone, you know, coach sees a laptop in a backpack or on the field or whatever, what's the consequence for the student? They'll be, I mean, it'll be up to the teachers, but it'll be taken away for a while. In there. But it's not a clear guideline. It's taken away. They lose their sign that's, privilege. That's what's happening currently at the middle school. If, if a student leaves, leaves their laptop in the hallway or leaves it in a class and uh -huh. forgets it, it's, it's taken away for a block of time. Okay. I was just curious. As to Do we have a lot of students that that's happening to? We have a few, <laughs> not a lot. Okay. You know, you know, 95, 98 percent of the students are using them responsibly. Okay. Okay. Anything else? No. Okay. Then can we have a motion to um, accept the middle school laptop guidelines? With the with the. Um Adjustments, the adjustments that we just spoke of. Right. Seems kind of complicated, huh? <clears throat> what is it? I mean, what is what is what is the board action really on this thing? I'm, I'm a little. Is confused. that there is? It, it's the same thing as um, when we have board approval of um, the athletic um, guidelines. As far as um, it's not a policy per se, but they're guidelines that that the board is giving their approval to. Um, and it's just been recommended that this kind of action, because of the nature of the cost, it's not just the school out acting on their own. They do have the support of the school board. So it's the endorsement of the, the school endorsement board. endorsement of the mm -hmm. school board. So that would be the motion. Mm -hmm. Endorsement versus approval. Right. Okay. So do you want yeah, to? Yeah, sure. Okay. I would uh, move that the board uh, endorse the guidelines for uh, handling the Apple iBooks um, as presented and with the modifications and revisions as suggested. Okay. Do we have a second? Susan? Um, any other questions? None? Okay. We'll take a vote. All in favor? 7-0. Thank you. Thank you, Gary. Thank you. Okay. Um, before we close this meeting, I'll just like to run through the um, scheduled meetings um, in the future. The next school board workshop will be Tuesday, October 22nd at 7 o'clock in the high school library. The topic there will be high school and middle school um, programming. And we will start um, conversations for the 2004 budget. The next building committee meeting will be Wednesday, October 30th at 7 p.m. in the William Jordan Conference Room. The policy subcommittee, Tuesday, November 5th at 12 o'clock noon in the William Jordan Conference Room. The finance subcommittee, Tuesday, November 12th at 6.30 in the William Jordan Conference Room. And our next school board meeting, Tuesday, November 12th, 7.30 here. Um, so we need a um, motion to leave public session and enter executive session um, to discuss the superintendent's evaluation. 
so a motion to leave public session kevin i move that we adjourn from public session and enter executive session to discuss the superintendent's evaluation um that no one we need no one who is not a member of the board at this session and we will not return to public session okay and a second susan um all in favor seven zero okay thank you